Hi, I'm Dr. David Atley, and in this video we're going to be looking at how the sky changes according to a single observer over the course of a night, and also a little bit depending on where that observer is on the surface of the Earth. In order to do that, we're going to be using the Rotating Sky Explorer from Nap Labs, and then towards the end of the video, I'll jump briefly into a planetarium simula simulator called Stellarium that'll show us how the sky looks like from the inside. Let's get started. I've already opened up my Nap Labs, so I'll begin by going to the rotating sky, and then I'll pick the rotating sky explorer. That will open up a window that looks like this one, which we'll be using to explore the motions of the stars across the sky and how they connect to the celestial sphere. For more on the celestial sphere and its connection to things like the zodiac and the ecliptic, you can go ahead and watch this video up here. In order to use this explorer, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a recognizable constellation that's going to illustrate an important concept a little bit later. So I'm going to start by putting on the Big Dipper. And then I'm also just going to add some random stars that show just general star behavior at random places across the sky. And then I'll finish by telling Nap Labs that I want to see long star trails so I can see not only where the stars are now, but also where they've been. And one last thing before we get started, I'm going to shift the observer to approximately the position of New York City so you can see what the sky would look like to someone in New York. And now I'll click Start Animation, and you'll see the stars start to move across the sky. And you'll notice that they're moving from the eastern horizon over here, where they're rising, say follow that star right there, it's moving across the sky, reaching its highest point, and then setting over here in the west. There are some stars down here, near the South Celestial Pole, again, see the video on the celestial sphere, that are so far south that they never rise for an observer in New York City, and so those stars are invisible. They always stay below the horizon. Those are the counterparts to an important group of stars called the circumpolar stars. Those are stars that are really close to the North Celestial Pole, and so they always stay above the horizon. Again, for an observer in New York depending on where you are on different places of the Earth, which stars are circumpolar and which stars are invisible are going to change. So let's pause this, reset the star trails, and now I'm going to turn my simulated sky so that we can focus on the stars near the North Celestial Pole. Watch the Big Dipper. This bottommost star in the handle of the Big Dipper is only just going to barely skim the horizon. So it doesn't quite set, but it gets really, really close. So the Big Dipper is an example of a circumpolar constellation. There are stars that are so close to the North Celestial Pole that they never rise or set. And there are a bunch of other ones of those too. I've got some random stars in these different locations, and just by dumb luck, I happened to get a star right at the North Celestial Pole. That star doesn't move, it always stays in exactly the same place, so that would be an example of what we call a pole star. Um, right now, the pole star is Polaris, that's what we oftentimes call the North Star. This motion, this rising in the east, setting in the west, or circling around the celestial pole for the circumpolar stars, all of that behavior is caused by the rotation of the Earth. If you look over here on the left-hand side of the simulator, you'll see that the Earth is turning on its axis, but the stars are staying in place. This idea of fixed stars surrounding a rotating Earth is an important concept that's connected to the celestial sphere. Again, that celestial sphere video. One of the reasons that celestial sphere is so important and so useful is that it allows us to visualize and imagine how the stars are going to behave at different times of year and also at different places on the Earth. For example, 
Let's look not at how stars look from New York, but at how they look from the equator. So let me drag my observer down from about 40 degrees north near New York City down to, say, Ecuador at the equator of the Earth. You'll notice that all of those stars, like the Big Dipper, that used to be circumpolar, that would not rise or set, but always stay in the sky, now they're rising and setting. So which stars are circumpolar is going to change depending on where you're standing. Somebody standing at the equator sees something different than someone standing at New York, who will see something different than a person standing at the North Pole. Now the trade-off for losing all of those circumpolar stars is that if you're standing at the equator, those stars that were previously invisible because they're really close to the South Celestial Pole, now those are going to rise, so you'll be able to see them. And once again, you'll notice these stars rising towards the east on the right-hand side of the diagram, moving across, hitting their highest point, and then setting towards the west. Now, as promised, let's take a look at what that looks like from the inside. Um, and to do that, I'm going to use a planetarium simulator software called Stellarium. I'm going to be using the desktop version of Stellarium because it's a little bit more fully featured and it gives me a bit more control, but there's a totally decent browser-based version available as well at stellarium-web.org. And I'll link to that, again, somewhere in the general up there direction. I've set Stellarium to show me the sky right around the time of sunset on December 21st, 2020. That's the winter solstice, the day when the days are really, really short and the nights are really, really long. So we're going to have a lot of pretend nighttime to look at and watch the motions of the stars. So I'll start the clock, let time start running, but by the magic of computers, I'm going to speed time up a little bit so we can see motions faster than real time. You'll notice the sun set, the moon, and some planets moving across the sky. As they were moving, they're moving from left to right across my screen, and that's because I'm looking south. So I'm looking south in the simulator, which means that east is to my left and west is to my right. So the stars, the moon, the planets are all rising in the east, moving across the sky, and then they're going to set in the west. There's the constellation Orion showing up. It's a really famous constellation that's very, very bright and easy to spot that's in the sky for most of the night during the winter months. Let's turn around now, digitally, and see how the sky looks if we're facing due north. So I'm going to spin us around. Okay, now we're facing north. There's the north star called Polaris. You'll notice, as I start things running again, that Polaris isn't going to move. It's always going to stay in that same spot, and we're going to see a bunch of circumpolar constellations circle around Polaris. So keep an eye on that bright star right there, Polaris, which will stay fixed in place. I'm just going to change the sky a little bit so you can see a little more sky, a little less land, and also bring up some const constellation markers. So there's a famous constellation, that's the Little Dipper, there's part of the, or the Big Dipper over here, which is part of a larger constellation called Ursa Major, the Great Bear. Up here, that's Cassiopeia. All of these are circumpolar constellations. So let's watch what happens to those constellations near the North Star as I let time start going. And you'll notice now they're rising in the, okay, that's too fast. <laughs> Backup time. Again, through the magic of computers, I can just back things up. You'll notice all of those constellations coming up over here to the east. So now east is on the right because I'm facing a different direction. 
and then they'll circle around counterclockwise around Polaris. You'll notice Polaris staying right fixed in place. And constellations like Cassiopeia and Draco, this one over here, and Ursa Major up here, they're all going to remain in the sky throughout the course of the night. You'll notice, see, Polaris still not moving. Everything instead is just moving around Polaris. And now we're coming up towards the end of the night. It's about 6 a.m. in our simulated daytime. The sun's beginning to rise, and all the constellations are disappearing. Depending on where you are on the Earth and what time of year it is, you will see different constellations at different locations. Some constellations are only visible in the winter, some are only visible in the spring. If you change the latitude of the observer, you'll see different circumpolar constellations. So Stellarium lets us see all of those important concepts that we illustrated graphically using the Celestial Sphere Explorer. So I encourage you, um, if you're using a Mac or a PC as a home computer and you can install this sky simulator, play around with it. And also, if you have some time, play around with Stellarium. It'll give you a good sense for how the sky looks over the course of the night. And if you're a sky watcher, it also tells you which planets are out. So if you want to go out in the evening and see some cool planets, it'll tell you where they're going to be at which particular time so they're easier to spot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in class.